How do you hold a handgun? This is the first and possibly the most important part of learning how to shoot. However, if you ask 10 different instructors this question, you may get 10 different answers. Often we take information from high performing competition shooters or from members of the special operations community. And while their training and experience have a lot of merit, it doesn't let them change the physics of how the firearm moves, nor how the physiology of the body affects the movement of the firearm. First, let's talk about the physics of the firearm. When the firearm goes off, it always moves in this backwards and upwards direction. That means the only way to truly inhibit this movement is to use the front strap and back strap of the hand grip. So if we want to apply force to the firearm to stop this movement, these are the two most critical places to concentrate. As you hold the firearm, remember to direct all your concentrated energy to these two spots. So what does this exactly look like? Well, with the primary hand, it means extending into the firearm at this point in my hand, thus giving as much upward and forward pressure as possible into the tang of the handgun. The support hand, rotated forward, is now concentrating all the energy here at the bottom portion of the hand grip in my pull, thus meaning I'm directing all the energy at the bottom of the hand grip. Looking at the movement of the firearm, it seems pretty obvious now how you would affect in stopping the movement but for some reason, much of the shooting world isn't looking at it this way. And it's providing bad instruction because it's ignoring the physics. But let's look at two examples of how you may have been taught to hold the handgun wrong and how that grip will impact your shooting. One example is to almost lock out the primary harm. When this happens, the forced concentration goes from here at the webbing to the tang to the midpoint of the hand in the middle of the grip. The same thing happens is that the support hand will under rotate, so it goes from here to here. As this happens, the force from there changes from the bottom of the hand grip now to the top of the hand grip. This will reduce your ability to apply leverage to the firearm. Another bad technique is to concentrate on the sides of the firearm rather than the front and back strap. As if your pinching of the firearm at the top of the hand grip will stop the forces in rotation. But as we can clearly see, the pinching forces may slow down the rotation, but they don't stop it. Your shots will again have to slow down to maintain accuracy unless you can apply a massive amount of force to either side through your strength. Effective grip has little to do with strength and more to do with leverage. Just because someone can make one of the two previous bad methods work through brute force doesn't mean they're teaching you the most effective techniques. As defenders, we should be chasing after the most effective technique, achieving a deeper understanding of what we're doing and consistently practice as we go forward in defending ourselves, our families, and our communities.